Okay, so in this next part, we're going to go over some practical uh, rules for deriving the quantum numbers. In other words, um, how do, what are the rules for determining what quantum numbers are possible? And then uh, we're going to also look at how we associate these quantum numbers with the uh, specific orbital types. In other words, we're going to start to look at the uh, quantum numbers as a shorthand notation for uh, the electrons uh, in these various orbitals. So recall that the rules governing uh, the values for the principal quantum number n, which dictates the energy, is that it goes in integer steps, 1, 2, 3, 4, on up, and that the energy is increasing as n increases. In terms of our orbital, what this means is that the uh, orbital is going to be increasing in size as we go up in energy. In other words, at n equals 1, if this orbital represents the 90% probability uh, of finding the electron, when we get up to n equals 4, that 90% probability is spread out over a much larger volume around the nucleus. So the probability of finding the electron is getting further and further away from the nucleus as we go up in energy level, right? These orbitals are getting larger. The value of L, the shape of the orbitals, is dictated by the principal quantum number n. L can take on values from 0 to 1 to 2, 3, on up to n minus 1, which means that at the first energy level, you have only one L value that's possible, L equals 0. At n equals 2, second energy level, we have two possibility, possible values of L, 0 and 1, because you're going from 0 to 2 minus 1, or 0 to 1 in integer steps. At level 3, we have 0, 1, and 2, and this increases as we go to level 4 on up. What this means is that the uh, types of shapes of the orbitals is increasing as we go up an energy level. Now, chemists give letter codes uh, to signify these various orbital types. And so these letters are associated with the various orbital shapes. The L, when L is equal to 0, we call that an S orbital. And S orbitals have a spherical shape. I've represented the probability density here with the shading, as the darker shading representing the in, uh, higher probability, which uh, decreases as you get further from the nucleus. But you can see the overall probability uh, density shape is uh, spherical in nature for the S orbital. Also notice that there's an S orbital associated with each energy level, right? So each energy level has a spherical uh, S orbital. Now, at L equals 1, uh, the letter that we use to signify that orbital is called is P, so it is a P orbital. These have a dumbbell type of shape. Again, you can see I've represented the probability density with the shading. Also notice that as you cross from this side of the orbital to this side, the probability of finding the electron goes to zero. In regions where the electron probability falls to zero, uh, within an orbital uh, uh, is, is called a node. So where this electron density goes to zero, we call that a nodal region. Uh, when we go to L equals 2, now we have a d orbital. And you can see now that the complexity and the shape is also increasing. The d orbital has a sort of double uh, uh, dumbbell shape, right? And uh, that just continues when we go to um, L equals 3, that's an F orbital, and um, I'm not drawing the shape, but you can uh, look some up. They're very pretty, and the complexity of the shape uh, goes up uh, as we uh, increase the value of L. Now, uh, past uh, L equals 3, um, we continue the same trend. The letters, though, just start to go in alphabetic order, so F, G, and so forth. Recall that I mentioned that each orbital, ha each uh, level has an s orbital. So when we signify the orbitals right, at n equals 1 here, 
we have an L value of zero. Zero signifies an S orbital, so this would be an S orbital in the first energy level, which we call a 1S orbital. At level two, we have L values of zero and one, in other words, two possible orbital uh, types. So we have a 2S orbital, so an S orbital, L equals zero, right? So at level two, L takes on values of zero, one. In other words, we have two possible orbitals, an S orbital and a P orbital. And then the P orbital would be called a 2P orbital. Uh, notice, of course, there's no 1P orbital because we can't have an L value of one at N equals one uh, by these rules. And then when we go to N equals three, we have then the uh, 3s orbital, the 3p orbital, and a 3d orbital, right? So we're at third energy level, L value is 0, 1, and 2, and 2 signifies a d orbital, this uh, uh, orbital type. Okay, so next we'll talk about how we determine the values of ml, the quantum number associated with the orientation of our orbitals in 3d space. ML takes on values dictated by the quantum number L, and it goes from L to L minus 1 to L minus 2 to negative L. So um, at energy level 1, where we have only one possible value L, we also have only one possible value of ML associated with that uh, particular orbital type. So our, our 1s orbital uh, has only one value of ml, only one orientation. This should make sense. It's a spherical orbital. Uh, so you know, there's only one way to orient this. If I rotate it around, in other words, it doesn't change its orientation relative to the xyz axes. That is the same for my s orbital at level 2. The 2s orbital is also spherical in shape. It has an l value of 0. And uh, therefore, it has only one ML value. In other words, only one orientation. Only difference between, or one of the differences between the, the 2S and the 1S is that the 2S is larger. Okay, so S orbitals have one value of ML. P orbitals have three values of ML. A P orbital has an L of one. And so we're going from one to negative one, right? And then one minus one is zero. So zero, one, negative one as our values for uh, ML when L is equal to one. So in other words, there are three orientations for a P orbital. Looking at those orientations, if we draw XYZ coordinates, we can draw that double dumbbell shape, the shape associated with the P orbital, along the Z axis, along the Y axis, and then a third one along the X axis. So these orientations are associated with the three possible uh, ML quantum numbers. And of course, every uh, P orbital, regardless of level, Right, we're at if we're at the third level 3p orbital, right, which has an L value of one also, um, it also has three orientations like this. The orbitals at the third level are just larger. Okay. And then um, at the third level, we see we have a, a 3s orbital with one ML value, one orientation, a 3p orbital with three orientations, right? Values of ML from one, zero to negative one. And then finally, the d orbital with L equals 2 goes from 2 to 2 minus 1, 1, to 2 minus 2, 0, right? 2 minus 3, which is negative 1, and then on to negative 2, like so. Okay. Let's now uh, briefly talk about the um, overall energy states for these orbitals. Uh, as energy increases, uh, or as the principal quantum number increases, we know uh, the energy uh, state for the electron is increasing. The first energy level, 
has just the one orbital type, the one s orbital. When we go to the second energy level, we now have a 2s orbital and a 2p orbital. And I'm just representing the energy states with these uh, uh, associated with those orbitals with the, these uh, dashed lines. When we get to third energy level, we have a 3s, a 3p, and a 3d. And notice I'm drawing uh, a number of lines for the d orbital equal to the possible orientations. So in other words, a d orbital, right, which starts at the third level, can have ml values of 2, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 2. So I drew a one dash for each of those um, uh, sub-orbital uh, uh, types within, within that orbital. This table summarizes what we've discussed so far about the quantum numbers. Notice that it shows that as n increases, that the total number of orbitals that are allowed for each energy level is also increasing. So we have one orbital within the first energy level, four orbitals within the second energy level, nine within the third energy level, and so forth. And that's because, of course, at uh, n equals one, we have only one allowed value of L, zero. Zero signifies an S orbital. And um, with L equals zero, you have only one possible value of ML. And so we have only one orbital allowed for the first energy level. When we get to energy level two, now L can take on values of zero and one. So there are two orbital types associated with level two, an S orbital and a P orbital. S and P. The S orbital has one ML value, one orientation allowed. So we have a single 2S orbital at the second energy level. However, the P orbital with L equals one has three possible values of ML, three orientations, and therefore there are three uh, specific P orbitals, three, at the second energy level. Another way that um, this is sometimes described in your book is the energy levels are uh, termed shells. So this is the first shell, second shell, third shell, fourth shell of electrons. Within a shell, you have the specific uh, orbital types, which are called uh, subshells. So this would be uh, when we get the second level, for instance, we have the S subshell and the P subshell. And then the ML values describe the specific orbitals. So we have the two, right? We have a um, one S orbital, a two S orbital, and then three different P orbitals, PZ and the PX and PY orbitals, the ones along the, aligned along the Z and the X and Y axis. So that leads to the increasing number of uh, orbitals uh, per shell, or the increasing orbital types that are allowed for the electron uh, per uh, energy level.